This video is sponsored by Raycon. Most of my videos are video essays designed to encourage people to think critically while also being thoughtful and compassionate. But sometimes in order to make a point, I have to break down the facts and data surrounding a given subject. I care a lot about facts and data. In fact, I try not to have strong opinions on anything unless there is some data to support it. I think of myself as a progressive person, and I think sometimes progressives kind of intuitively know that we're on the right track morally. Like sure, more freedom, more justice, less suffering, less inequality, all those things sound good. We naturally like those ideas, even if we don't necessarily have all of the data to support our views. So I think most progressives understand that there is something deeply wrong with the way that the police and the criminal justice system interacts with people of color. We keep seeing unarmed, nonviolent black people killed by police. We keep hearing stories of unfair treatment and unequal punishments for the same crimes. We know something's going on. We see the activists at work. We hashtag Black Lives Matter. But not all of us have taken the time to actually look into the data. One of the most common tactics that bad faith debaters use is to try to gotcha people. By making you have to defend your opinions on the spot, by asking for sources or throwing out statistics, some of which might be decontextualized, if not completely made up. When it comes to racial bias and criminal justice, you might hear things like, well, you know, white people get killed by police more than black people, or, you know, black people only get killed by police more because they commit more crime things of that nature. And if you don't know off the top of your head the facts to counter those claims, you can be made to look foolish and they get to walk away as if they've totally owned you. Well, I am here to tell you that when it comes to bias against black people in law enforcement and criminal justice, the data is certainly on your side overwhelmingly so. And even though my videos are generally more opinion than fact-based, in this video I'm going to share a bunch of data on this subject as kind of a starter resource for people who are interested in researching this stuff. Hi, I'm T1J. Follow me. This video, like all of my videos, would not be possible without my members and patrons, including homies like Stephen Collars, Malpertius, Rachel Ann, and Anna Lynn Heinkel. If you'd like to support the channel, you can become a homie yourself by clicking the join button below the video or by checking out my page on Patreon. Now I'm gonna say a bunch of things and most of the things that are reports of data or assertions of fact should be accompanied by a visual aid if such a visual aid such as a graph is available but you can check out the full text of the sources including sources that are not shown in this video by checking the description below all of the data that i'm using are either from peer-reviewed studies or simple mathematical analyses using widely available state and federal sources so the police definitely kill a disproportionate number of people of color, particularly black people. Although a larger number of white people are killed, black people are killed at more than twice the rate, even though they make up about 13% of the population. Black people killed by the police are much more likely than white people to be unarmed and less likely to pose an immediate threat. This is all well established by many studies. A common argument for why this occurs is that black people commit more violent crimes, which results in them interacting with the police more often, which then results in them being killed by the police more often. Keep in mind, this completely ignores the point that unarmed and nonviolent black people are also killed at a higher rate than white people. However, several studies suggest that there is no real relationship between the crime rate in a given area and the number of people who are killed by police. It's likely true that black people interact with the police at a higher rate, but this is often itself due to racial bias. One of the most famous examples of this is the stop and frisk program in New York City and other similar programs in other cities. These studies pretty openly target black and Latinx civilians. In 2017, 
90% of the people detained by police in New York City were either Black or Latinx, even though those groups only make up roughly half the population. And again, this has nothing to do with crime rates. Even after controlling for crime rate, people of color are stopped at a disproportionate rate. Although the quantity of stops have reduced in recent years, this practice continues to this day even though there's no evidence that it has had any effect on reducing crime. In general, there's plenty of data that shows that black people are more likely to be stopped by police than white people. Black people are more likely to be searched during a stop, even though black people are less likely to be found with contraband. A couple of recent studies found that while black people are much more likely to be pulled over than white people, the disparity decreases at nighttime when police are less able to distinguish the race of the driver. Black people are also more likely to be threatened by police and to have police use force against them. And this remains true whether the contact is civilian or police initiated. There's always a lot of talk about violent crime, but most of the high profile media cases regarding police killing of black people involve either non-violent crimes or no crime being committed at all. In fact, black people are arrested far more for non-violent crimes, such as disorderly conduct, vandalism, and drug possession, even though they commit these crimes at similar rates as white people. The drug war specifically has been one of the most significant contributors to the disproportionate arrests and incarcerations of black people. As mentioned, black people are arrested at a far higher rate for drug crimes even though they use and sell drugs at similar rates as white people. Police raids and SWAT deployments are used disproportionately against black people and in black neighborhoods. When police seize assets from civilians, which is already fucked up by the way, they do it more to black people and other people of color than they do to white people. Black people are also much more likely to be shown to be wrongfully committed of a crime. And the racial bias continues even after the initial interaction with the police. Black defendants are more likely than white defendants to be detained while awaiting trial and are given higher bail amounts for similar crimes. Black people receive longer sentences for the same crimes even when controlling for factors such as age or criminal history. There are over 2 million incarcerated people in the United States. The highest number in the world, by the way. And about 40% of those people are black. Also, black people make up 30% of the people on probation or parole. And black people are more likely than white people to have their probation revoked, even when adjusting for relevant factors. Black prisoners are more likely to be punished with solitary confinement, which by the way is a draconic punishment that the psychological community believes is tantamount to torture. And there's more to this, obviously. There's no doubt that black people commit or at least are arrested and convicted for a disproportionate number of violent crimes. And although, as I've hopefully shown, this doesn't explain or justify the racial bias in criminal justice, it's still an important subject. Black Americans are also disproportionately Proportionately poor and poverty with all of the struggles that come along with it like limited access to health care or education is strongly associated with violent crime the generational poverty within the black community is largely a result of the legacy of slavery and discrimination in America which continues to this day in many ways including bias in policing and criminal justice it's kind of a sick game when you think about it of course I believe in personal agency Ultimately, we're all responsible for our own actions. But our society marginalizes, antagonizes, incarcerates, and kills black people at disproportionate rates, which limits economic opportunities and erodes self-determination, which naturally is going to lead to more crime. And then we use those crimes as a justification to continue disproportionately attacking black people. It's a deadly cycle. But again, I must emphasize, this goes beyond crime. Black people are more likely to be mistrusted or perceived as threatening even when they are not criminals. And this bias continues to play a part in various aspects of society, including and especially criminal justice. As with any body of data, there are imperfections and unanswered questions. Not everything is cut and dry. And we must always be prepared to change our minds when presented with enough compelling evidence. But the general idea that there is racial bias in policing and criminal justice seems to be overwhelming 
overwhelmingly supported by the available data. Disputing this requires ignoring mountains and mountains of evidence, lots of which I'll share in the description, as I said. I'd also like to point out that this racial bias also affects other communities of color, especially natives and Latinx people. However, the issues surrounding black people are front and center in the national conversation right now, and as you might imagine, hit close to home for me personally. And this is a complex issue. The fact that this particular video is about racial bias by no means implies that racial bias is the only problem with the criminal justice system. I feel like that should be obvious, but I've been doing this long enough to anticipate the inevitable whataboutism that will happen in the comments. Either way, I hope this inspires you to keep researching and keep informing yourself, not only on this topic, but any topic you think is important, because there's always more to learn. That's just me though. What do you think? Thank you for watching and thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Raycon offers stylish wireless earbuds in a variety of colors and patterns. They're great for working out, listening to music or podcasts, or working from home, which I know a lot of people are still doing. These earbuds are loved by celebrities such as Snoop Dogg, Melissa Etheridge, and J.R. Smith. The best part though is Raycon's earbuds start at about half the price as other premium wireless earbuds on the market. With without sacrificing the amazing audio quality that you've come to expect. The Everyday E25 earbuds are the best model yet, with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and a more compact design. I personally love them. They are super comfortable and discreet and have none of those dangling wires or those weird stems. And this is coming from a person who normally doesn't even like earbuds. So if you'd like to see what Raycon has to offer, just go to buyraycon.com T1J. There's a link in the description below. And if you follow my link, you can get 15% off your order. And remember, by supporting sponsors like Raycon, you not only get access to a great product, but you also support me and help me take my content to the next level.